Hey guys, so if you watched my last video on my acrylic DML panel build, the, the first part, you'll know that I did have an issue with the rigidity of the panel. It was actually not as rigid as I expected and as a result I had to add additional mounting points to attach that to the frame just to beef up the rigidity a bit. Then when I was playing some music through the panel I noticed that there was a significantly better bass response when I was uh, when the exciter was mounted close to those attachment points. So what I'm doing today is that I've got another acrylic sheet, a couple of cheap bits of pine. I'm just going to knock together a quick frame to mount the panel on and then I'll drill a bunch of holes in the panel so I can try different mounting configurations and then we'll get on to testing and what I'm looking for is obviously the differences between the configurations. Let's get into it. Okay, so I've got my frame. It's uh, square, or at least square enough. Let's get the panel on. So that will all line up correctly. I've put one at each corner, or near each corner, similar to what I have on my uh, Goldie panels. I've got one dead center between those two points and then in between each of those I've got a halfway as well. I'm kind of hoping that that one works well because that would be easy for me to implement on my panels without having to uh, move the, the center one. Anyway, uh, I also did holes at the um, much celebrated two-fifths position on either side of the center. So I can try uh, one or both of the two fifths and then putting the exciter right behind that uh, position, which, you know, if you believe the internet, that should probably result in the best sound, but testing will tell. I'll just get some grommets into this panel and uh, get it on the frame. Test panel done. Time to test. I actually think this looks pretty cool as well. You could probably make quite a good looking speaker out of a basic frame like this. You know, with a little bit of refinement. the uh, six attachment points, three on each side. So one in each corner and one in the middle on each side. This is what I've currently got on my Goldie speakers. Uh, so I'll start with that to get a good baseline. Then I'm going to try adding additional attachment points uh, halfway between the existing ones. 
And then after that, I'm going to try removing the central attachment point and replacing it with two attachment points at the two fifths position on either side. Uh, and then I'll try listening and testing in all of those configurations. And hopefully after all of that, I'll have a better idea of what I actually like and where I should place my exciter on the Goldies. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm ready to start testing. I've got my sweep set from 100 hertz to 20 kilohertz. I am planning to use a sub with this system, so it'll be a 2.1 system, uh, regardless of how good the, the bass might be. It's still not gonna be as good as a dedicated subwoofer, so uh, I'll just start at 100, we'll go up to 20 kilohertz and see what we get. Obviously, this is still the original six screw uh, configuration. And I'm going to try test four positions with the exciter. Uh, I'm going to go dead center because that's where it appeared to give the best bass when I was listening to music last week. I'm going to try the standard two fifth position. And then I'm going to try two fifths position vertically, but centered horizontally, because I think that would look good. And for the same reason, I'm going to try the three quarter, three quarters up and centered. Um, it would be really nice if one of those symmetrical ones sounds good. Uh, if not, then I won't use it. But if so, happy days. All right, let's go. Well, they all sound the same, but uh, I guess we'll see what the computer says. Now I've just got to change the bolt configuration. Uh, next up, I'm going to make it more rigid by installing the uh, one quarter and three quarter attachment points. And then I'll run the same four positions and see what we end up with. And on it went. I'll spare you from listening to a whole bunch of boop and skip right to the results. Once again, I'm focusing on the frequency response and SPL measurements. I'm aware that there is more to good sound than just flat response curves, but the other stuff can wait, at least for now. I'll start with the six bolt pattern. This is the current layout on my project Goldie panels, consisting of attachment points in each corner and halfway along the longer dimension. As with my last measurements, I've smoothed the results to 1 12th of an octave just for clarity. The first measurement is at the center position. You can see there's a huge spike around 280 hertz, which drops off just as steeply. Look at the pattern we have here. You can see obvious cancellations at 194 hertz, 375 hertz, 760 hertz, and then 1260 hertz. 
Okay, so that last one's a bit off, but let's say it had drawn at 1520 as expected. Where would the next dip occur? Around 3 kilohertz, right? Check out the dip at 2.97 kilohertz. So no doubt my measurement isn't all that precise. And of course we are looking at a smooth graph here, but you can clearly see the pattern of nulls created by this placement. Moving on to the two fifths, three fifths position, it looks a bit better. There are fewer serious dips in the response and they're mostly of a smaller amplitude. The exception being the ones at 190 hertz and 680 hertz. You also don't have that huge peak at 290 that the center measurement shows. It's better. If we then center the exciter along the shorter dimension, the graph almost looks identical to the previous one. A few of the dips are very slightly larger, but there isn't a whole lot in it really. It's not quite as good though, so let's drop it off and stick with the two fifths, three fifths for now. Now here's an interesting result. This is the three quarters and center position. It's weaker below 150 Hertz due to the big peak in that other measurement, but the base roll off is noticeably smoother in the three quarters measurement. That continues right through the mid range with slightly less pronounced dips and peaks. Putting an extreme smoothing on both lines shows this a bit more clearly and the three quarter measurement seems a bit more consistent overall. As an interesting aside, after I'd reviewed these graphs, it hit me that this three quartered and centered position is exactly the same as what they do on the AER Goldie speakers that inspired me to build mine. Coincidence? Dunno. Okay, let's look at the 10 volt configuration now. This is the most rigid setup that I tried and should provide the most damping of the panel at least according to my own inexpert reasoning. Unfortunately, I seem to have changed the sweep frequency back to 20 Hertz instead of 100 Hertz here, but I'll only be comparing the response from 100 Hertz up. With the exciter dead center, the response is remarkably even. I'd venture that perhaps the additional attachment points are doing a pretty good job of controlling any resonances here. With the exciter in the two fifths, three fifths position, the results are similar, but actually not quite as consistent as the centered configuration, with slightly lower dips and higher peaks, and only a couple of exceptions. That's weird. Again, you can see this more clearly in the half octave smoothing, in which the red centered measurement has a smoother overall arc to it. So again, I'm ditching the two fifths, three fifths graph, but it's close. At the two fifths and center position, the results are very similar to the two fifths, three fifths version. The three quarter and center graph is again very similar. Look at them all together and you can see a remarkable consistency between all of these different exciter positions. The extra attachments are definitely contributing here, so this doesn't really surprise me. What does surprise me is this. Look at the 10 volt graph next to the 6 volt version. Both of these lines are from the exciter at the 3 quarter and centered position. The blue 10 volt absolutely destroys the 6 volt up to about 250 hertz. More damping equals higher output? Is that right? Doesn't sound right. So the downside here is that it's a bit lumpier. But damn, the difference here is between 10 and 20 decibels throughout that whole range. That's huge. Anyway, I'm going with the three quarter and center position for this one as well. Let's just take a quick look at the eight bolt configuration now with the attachment at the two fifths positions along the long side. Again, there seems to be that trade off between smoothness and output in the lower frequencies. The two fifths and center line is the smoothest, but it does lack base. Surprisingly, the three quarter centered position is the weakest of the other three, with this big dip at 415 hertz, and then peaks at 2.5 and 3.6 kilohertz, where the others are relatively smooth. Of the remaining two, I give the slight edge to the purple, 
two fifths, three fifths measurement. Now that I've selected the best of each configuration, I can compare them to see which looks to be the overall best combination of a attachment points and exciter position. Right off the bat, you can see that the green is significantly weaker in the base. That's the three quarters and centered position in the six bolt setup. This does seem to be the overall smoothest line though, so I'll put that to one side for now and compare the other two, which are quite similar. Yeah, okay, they're very similar. The purple seems better between 150 and 350 hertz. That's the two-fifths exciter with the attachment points in the two-fifths positions. The green line is the three-quarter and centered position with 10 bolts. But green doesn't drop off as hard below 150 hertz. It also has an admittedly big advantage of looking neater and more symmetrical, which I like. So let's say I've narrowed it down now to the two three-quarter position measurements. One is smoother through the whole range and the other has more power down low. Yeah, which would you choose? Actually, you know what? I'm not going to choose right now because there are a couple of other options. I could use multiple exciters per panel. I did try this on my bamboo panels without much success, but I didn't really do any proper testing before just sticking them on. And I'm thinking that now might be the time to look into that further. Another thing that I'm going to try out is one I've seen in the open baffle world. Installing one or more wings on the sides to help separate the front and back waves emanating from the panel. So tune in next time for that experiment. You may have noticed that regardless of configuration, the high frequency response of the acrylic is stellar rising all the way up to 20 kilohertz. In contrast, my bamboo ply panels rolled off heavily above about 12K, albeit with different drivers installed. My original plan was to experiment with adding a capacitor to the circuit in order to high pass the speakers at around 100 hertz, just to take away some of that bass energy. If the top end is harsh, I may also have to consider adding an inductor to make a really wide band pass of like 100 hertz to 15 kilohertz or something like that. But I'll leave that decision until after I've heard them. If you are interested in this stuff and you want to see how I get on with those experiments, please like and subscribe this video. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time.